And we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 111 of Fans of Power. I am Joe Amato, and I'm here with my partner in crime, Tyler T. Rex Baker. How's it going, T. Rex? We got a lot of people waiting in the chat room. It's uh, our, it's our, I guess our, our holiday special. If last week was, I guess, was our our prequel to the holiday special. This is our holiday special episode here. So, um, I guess looking to spread some Christmas cheer heading into. Uh, this uh, following weekend, which hopefully won't date this episode too much, but when people go back and revisit it, it this, <laughs> will, this will all take place. This I'd like to make this an episode that if people go back and listen to, doesn't date it so much. It's just that you can go back and revisit this as is the is a, is one of our many Christmas related episodes. So hopefully this is uh, not something that. Because um, yeah, it's not just. Be, yeah, it's not that? just Christmas. No, it's like you said, not, not just, just Christmas. I mean, we have some other topics, yeah, it's, too. It's, yeah, I guess I couldn't say it's our holiday special because there's, there's more in this other, other than that. But this is our our uh, send-off episode heading into the Christmas season. Or, or, you know, but, um, next, we'll have two weeks off coming up after this one. We're in next week and the following week, but then we'll be back. But quickly, I just want to say hello to everyone in the chat room. We got Dave Clark, Tom Charlton, Nathan Kennedy. We got JSP. We got Ivan. And uh, J.D. Gibson. So thank you, everyone, for joining us and hope you enjoy this episode. Well, like I said, we'll be doing a discussion, of course, on the Christmas special, doing a commentary. But before that, we have a couple other topics. And it's just our thoughts on things. And But uh, quickly, I wanted to say, um, I think that uh, popping up at Walmart, for those who are into those really cool little Mega Constructs figures, that Beastman and Tila have popped up at Walmart. So uh, those are cool. I don't know if you've seen them, Tyler, but those are some yeah, cool I figures. Yeah, I posted a picture about that. I, th- I I have Skeletor. That's the only one I've been able to find so far It's just that one. So I, I, I bought him. Wait, I think we might have lost Tyler for a second. He should pop up. Wait. I think he's there. I'm oh, here. you there, Tyler? I barely stepped away from the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever you did, it made a weird little glitch. But uh, uh, we got you now. Okay, well, these have been shown, and I decided to break down and trip myself to one, but uh, the second batch of Pops. Oh, uh, okay. Pops. I, I got me Battle Armor He-Man at Hot Topic this weekend. Oh, okay. Which ones were all available there? Uh, they had uh, everybody, but ba- I, I don't – I they had, like, a large wall, and I, I can only see it but so far, but I did see Orko. I saw uh, Merman – Evil in in Battle Armor here. I couldn't find Skeletor. If I had find Skeletor, if I had found Skeletor, you know, and I'm on a budget anyway, Christmas shopping, everything. So it was oh, all yeah. I could do to make sure I, I get this. This, but uh, what are they about five ninety nine? Hey, huh? How much are they about five ninety nine or what do they cost? Well, hot, no, at Hot Topic they were twelve fifty. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure on the yeah. prices. I didn't know what. The- yeah, Hot Topic charges more. I, I went to Barnes Noble and picked up a couple, uh, or picked up one from my brother. Um, and they, they were 10 bucks there. I know Walmart, I think they asked like eight bucks for theirs, but I, from what I read, am I wrong or that this batch of He-Man uh, pops are only, or they're just hot topic. Is that correct? You know, I honestly didn't know if they were just exclusive. To I, hot I topic. Did, when I saw that they were released, it said that they, they're, you can find them in hot topic now. So I took it as, okay, are they the only ones selling these? Cause I know Walmart was selling Baxter Stockman from uh, Turtles, and, I, and that was a, an exclusive. So hell, I didn't know. But um, well, I'm assume I would assume, but I could be wrong that maybe those are sold to other places. But I know some stores have exclusive figures. Like David Clark, he mentioned, uh, he said anyone see the exclusives like Faker. So maybe certain stores will have a certain exclusive. I'm not quite sure, but okay. either way, yeah, those are cool looking little suckers. Yeah, I've never been big on the pops, but uh, here in the last couple of months, there's been a few I actually wouldn't mind having. And I, you know, knowing that the first run of pops were, I only saw them online. I was, I just didn't feel like paying the money for them. But now that I've seen these, I actually might try and get, if not all of them, a few, a few more of them. Merman <laughs> looked really cool. I, I, I thought Merman with with his um, uh, spear and the, uh, the the crimson pearl. I thought, holy, that's that's badass, man. It's like I. I'm going to have to get that. And there's a hot topic about 20 minutes from my house. I got this one in, in Rona, which is about an hour away. All right. But, uh, well, hopefully you've had some luck finding the others. Because, yeah, I mean, I like the little details that they do into some of these things. So yeah, that's and, pretty and cool. At least if they're going to redo He-Man and Skeletor, it's a legitimate variant as opposed to just some, like, pissant color scheme or something. Like, they, they color, <laughs> right. you know, He-Man gold or some nonsense like that, you know. 
Yeah. All right. Well, that was cool. Thank you for showing that because those are cool looking little things. And yeah. also I want to say hello to Jackie Miller in the chat room. Joined us. Thank you for joining us. And well, before we get to, you know, the Christmas special later, I, I'm sure everybody in this chat room and listening possibly has heard the news about the new she cartoon that's going to be coming out next year in 2018. It's going to be a Netflix series. And it's Noelle Stevenson. Uh, she's the one that's working on this. I think she's been writing it for 20, or I'm sorry, 20. 20 years. She's been writing it for 20 years. She's been writing since she's been, what, four or five years old? Now? Yeah, because she's 25, 25 years old. But I know she's been writing it for two years. And, you know, I, like anything, I'm just super pumped and hoping it's going to be great. Just like when the new MYP cartoon came out, you know, I'm all jacked up, ready for that, super excited. That was a great series. This, we haven't seen any, you know, actual animation footage. You know, like some websites, like uh, like these comic websites, you know, websites have been seeing, you know, the ones that just like, you know, talking about any of the new news for anything coming out, you know, they'll show maybe a stock photo of Filmation or a stock photo of some like fan art or other art. And while I understand, yes, they're using it because they don't have the actual art from the cartoon, at times it can be misleading. I've seen so many people that when some of those websites, or excuse me, websites showed, the filmation one they said oh my god it's, it's gonna look like filmation it's coming back i was like no calm down everybody it's not gonna look like filmation they just had to do a placeholder james etock did the best way of promoting he just had the word shira he didn't have any art that's the way to do it to you know calm everybody down so not sure like i said what it's gonna look like i mean noel she described it as female friendship um and female empowerment you know, I don't know really how to take it because Oops. <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tyler. That's not what I want to hear when I when a new she series is coming out. I don't want to hear. Oh, my God. We lost him right when he said it. Hold on. Let's hope he pops right back up. OK, say it again, Tyler. We lost you right when you started saying. I, I don't. OK, I'll just go along with it there. Um the, when I see, seeing female friendship lumped into the very brief description slash summary of this new interpretation does not doesn't do me any favors and in fact just paints you know uh, flashing red you know lights going off that's that's what I see just because I it's not what I imagine because even though the original Shira show you know it was targeted for girls. But it works for guys and girls. Boy, but, you know. worked, but they they did not make it stray so far to where boys could not feel comfortable watching it because even though a lot of you know bright girly colors are in the show, there was a lot of you know elements that made you feel like you know what I'm I'm a guy I can still enjoy this because of all the ass kicking going on in the show, the awesome villains. He Man of course shows up multiple times. So does Skeletor. So you didn't feel like you were, you know. That as a, as, a, as a young boy, like, I can't be seen. It's a girl's show, and I, I don't, it just you know the, the whole the the Shira cartoon is. is it, I, mean, I think because of the rights thing, it's a separate entity from anything He Man related. Um, so I, I, we don't know if the Horde can even be brought in, and if they can, it may be just as as much as Catra, you know, we or or um, uh, you know maybe uh, Entrapta. You know, characters that seemed like they were exclusively linked to the Princes of Power toy line slash merchandise as opposed to the Filmation cartoon and things like that. Hell, I don't know. I'm not an expert on it, but I, I just know that the cartoon rights are a separate thing, which I know causes issues with, you know, more she related cartoon characters and classics and things like that. But my long story short, to hear that description, it, it, made, it made me worry. You know, we don't know much about this 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 new new at least she's new new to me i don't know who she is um you know i know james e talk you know was was trying to you know be positive about it in his kind of statement about it but when it when it was announced with a bunch of other really light and fluffy toddler slash sh uh, cartoons for girls it just felt like well i don't think this is going to be made for an adult audience for fans who've kept it alive all these years, I don't think it's going to be targeted towards them. I it almost feel like it's going to be targeted towards young girls, which I guess that's fine. It just sucks that, and I don't know, I could be completely wrong. And hell, I got the balls big enough 
to, to come out and admit, okay, I was completely wrong about what I'm thinking right now. Because I don't know. But it, it so, just makes me think that we're not going to be the target audience for this. That we're yeah, not. not quite sure. I wanted to say to everybody in the chat room, ignore. Somebody just popped up and said, find your love. Do not look at anything like that. And I think Dirt has just taken care of that, deleted that. So thanks for doing that, Dirt. But watch that out. I talking? Did I have, did I have like a, a, a protester show up? Oh, no, 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 no. There, no, this is what you, this, this is. Now, this is what you want to call live spam happening right on pans of power, probably leaking the, you know, porn. We were inciting some sort of riot because I wasn't coming out and saying the most positive thing about this new she show. I'm like, by God, man, we're really affecting the people. No, just some jerk, some jerk off. He just happened to pop up. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's tough. But um, no, when you know, get back to the cartoon, because like you said, you think of the filmation cartoon. At no point in being a boy watching that cartoon did I ever think, oh, I'm watching a girly cartoon. Because sure, when you looked at the figures, yes, obviously the figures were definitely geared towards girls, young girls. I mean, they had hair, you, they had brushes. Yes, it obviously was geared towards girls. The cartoon, it just had a different feel because she was like, you know, she's kicking ass. She's just like He-Man. She's the same thing, except she's a female. She has a same kind of like evil warrior she's battling against S same type of you know storylines there was at no time i thought like i felt weird watching her so that's what i want i want she to be that strong ass kicking woman that we remembered back in the day like how you could even think of wonder woman there's guys that gone to see the wonder one you know woman movie they don't think of it as a girl movie that's wonder woman but yeah. it's just like you said there's things we don't really know about this cartoon we've heard a lot of things but then there's things we don't know yet. I mean, like you said, the female friendship, I don't know what that means. Um, well, and if it's for that, for, to emphasize that, I mean, it really sounds like we're going to be, I, I can't help but envision something that looks like Mattel's Bratz toy line, that we're going to have she and Glimmer and cast a spell and Frostic walk around with these kind of quirky, you know, uh, sparkly faces and, and you know, you're going to have Catras constantly running around jealous in the background trying It's not going to be anything that we're expecting it to be. That it's it's not going to be fully matured adult women in their early twenties, maybe late twenties. Hell, even as far as early thirties, fighting this, you know, uh, dictator who's taken over the planet that her and her friends inhabit. It's it's it really. I it just well, just does, like it, it doesn't. We're not given the description of he, Shira, and the Great Rebellion fighting. You know, to free Ethera from the clutches of the evil horde we're getting female friendship maybe just joe and i overthinking and nitpicking too well much, like i said it's like i said I, you know it's it just that was one little blurb of it but i mean again i'm giving it go with other, other than you know, this three in in, in in with what james says and i'm hoping no like i said i'm hoping i'm wrong i mean definitely i, I want to be I not that even I, saying I, I want to be more wrong than i well yeah, yeah, because I want this. Of course I want this to be great. It was just that was one little blurb, wasn't sure. But, I mean, you never know. This could be absolutely great. And even, let's say, if it was – I know some people said, well, let's say it was geared towards younger girls. Like, let them have, you know, a, you know, a cartoon for their own, which – Yes, I can understand that, but also do not alienate the original fans because, like, look at Ninja Turtles. They created a cartoon recently with that's been on for, you know, a good amount of years that got new fans and old fans, and that's what I'm hoping they do with Shiva. Like I said, I have no idea what's going to happen with this, but I'm hoping it's fantastic. But the other thing is, remember, we're not going to be getting a giant run of a cartoon because, you know, they've on Netflix we've seen Castlevania. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Castlevania, which is a fantastic, you know, series. We've seen Voltron. That's fantastic. But those are only like 11 episodes or less. So, you know, it's like we're going to be hungry for more. If this ends up being super great, it's like, wow, all we got was 11. So we're not going to be getting no 20 episode seasons, 30 or definitely like the old days, a lot more. But it's probably going to be 11 or less. So, you know, like I said, I just I'm crossing my fingers, just hoping for the best. Just never know what's going to happen. But yeah, I've seen that, and there's a lot of people that, you know, were super excited, some that completely hated it, and then just a lot of theories. Like I said, this is just theories. There's absolutely... It's you know, theory, but um, I, I like the idea. I was I was glad to hear that it was going to be on Netflix, regardless, because that way we don't have to run into the whole Cartoon Network swapping the time slot yeah. uh, debacle from the 2000X cartoon. Don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and you definitely know, people... Because of the time slots being changed, like, no, it's accessible 24-7 now, so... I'm just hoping people try to be patient like me because I know Tyler, like, you know, when it came to Stranger Things, 
you know, he binge watched that season two, I think in a day or two. And I said, Tyler, I said, I'm going to try to stretch this out because I don't want to binge watch in a day or two and it's done. You know, I was like, I want to make it last one episode a week, maybe two. So if it comes every try to have some patience. It's hard, but Joe's just going to be watching an episode at a time, maybe one per week. Maybe I'll do two per week, but man, when you binge watch it and it's done, it's like, dang, what are you left with then? Then you go buy the merchandise. <laughs> then you go, you go look up uh, interviews with the cast and stuff like that on YouTube. You, you you keep digging around and looking for more and more and more. Then you run out of stuff and you're like, oh, God, I'm depressed now. Waiting for season three and, you know. Yeah. And I don't know how long each season will be to wait for the next and the next. But uh, there will definitely be continuity in this. So this will have a continuity. It won't yeah, be like yeah. The it should definitely have that. I just, I just you know, you know, it's, it, it's just um, – I guess it almost feels like to be greedy to expect this i this new cartoon to be, you know, made for the adult fans that could also bring in the girl fans too. But I, I almost feel like because the, this this uh, Noelle Stevenson is that her name? Yes, yes. She's a lot younger than us than than the the the, the vast majority of the fan base for He Man and She Ra. So this girl, I don't think she would she wouldn't have grown up with this cartoon, and hell probably wouldn't have seen it in syndication as a child. So you kind of feel like, you know, are we dealing with somebody that, not to say that someone with fresh eyes who can't always bring something new and interesting to the table. That's not what I'm saying, but you almost kind of feel like it helps to know that, but then again, too, we've had all these people that says, you know, said they grew up with He-Man and they want to be the director of a live action film. They don't, they don't, they don't know, you know, squat about He-Man, but they throw out, you know, I had Stratus as a kid and I, I own the mini comics too. Hire me. <laughs> so can't, you know, I guess it's kind of a, you know, a situation where I guess it really doesn't matter the background. You just want to pick, make sure you pick the right person for the job as opposed to someone who just, you know, I guess I kind of have to eat those words because I've kind of felt that, you know, previous people have no, like David Goyer and Mick G. I'm like, I don't associate them with having any kind of interest in He-Man. So well, I'm hoping should... she brings something great to the property. I, mean, I, just... I hope that she's yeah. well aware of the fan base that she has and that to come in and give it a complete facelift and make it, I mean, so much to, even though the 80s cartoon was meant for girls, the characters didn't act like kids. They acted like adults. And, you know, I'd hate to think that this show, you know, is going to interpret she as like a 13, 14, 15-year-old girl, you know, when she's dealing with, you know, acne in one, one episode, you know, to go to the snowball at Frost's Palace, and she's afraid Bo won't ask her out because she's got a pimple on her nose, and Catra's going to exploit it, and Turns out it wasn't a real pimple. It was just a ploy by Catra so Bo wouldn't ask her to the day. I'm just, I just worry it's going to be extremely well, I don't think, child, childlike. I, yeah, I don't, because I'm hoping it still won't. holds up today. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it wouldn't, and I don't think it would be like that. I am curious about the age, though, of the voice actors and if they will have a different age for the characters in the show. Something else we really don't know. You know, I don't know if she'll be portrayed. It too, that Melinda Britt came out and said that publicly that she was not involved in this show and i think that's a, that's a, that's a bit disconcerting yeah yeah i uh if yeah she were to come back and 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 play a small part or a legitimate pivotal part in 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 a new she or something why the hell wouldn't you do that yeah yeah because melindy brent uh, you know she, uh, brent she did put that on her uh facebook page and a lot of people asked and they said yeah apparently they you know they didn't ask her you know to I'm not saying, of course, she had to be Shira, but I guess she wasn't asked for any no, type but, to be I mean, no least, type of involvement. She has yeah, no. They've done it with the uh, turtle cartoons where they where they had uh, Rob Polson, and um, I mean, of course, the rest of the original cast of Turtles came back to do it, uh, a, a, a crossover episode in the, in the current Nickelodeon cartoon. Uh, at least with in the line uh, the Thundercats reboot, uh, Larry Kenny came back to play Claudius, Lionel's father. We'll campaign you know, for we'll campaign for her for to have some kind of part of some type of part well, in the again, show too, it, i almost feel like, well maybe for see if they're if they're if they've been working on it for this long you almost feel like season one's probably almost in the can and yeah i'd like to think bring her back for season two let her be I like don't, I don't her coming back and wasting her talents on a bubblegum show you know that, that's meant for you know five six-year-old girls but then again too the original show was too and so i, I don't want to come off like a 
I know what you mean, man. And you're not a show for kids when that's what it was meant we'll for to see. begin with. I don't I don't want to sound sound so so odd and stubborn like what the hell am I talking about? I just I get to just cross your fingers that and hope for the best. I mean you never know. This could be a fantastic series and within the next couple months I think they said they'll be telling us more. So maybe we'll finally see some animation, some pictures, something uh, something will come up. So let's just hope it's great. But either way, yeah, we'll probably have eleven episodes or less and it's just great to hear that something is returned because obviously we've been in, you know, movie limbo for masters for years and Hey, something's happening. Hopefully it sparks an interest in a lot of things to return. So you never know. Yeah. And I, I hope it's 2d animation and not necessarily 3d animation, even though turtle, the new turtles cartoon was, was fine in, in 3d animation. I, I, I still like to picture he-man cartoons and she was stuff in, in 2d animation. You know, I just, well, we'll, we'll definitely... I just, don't want to see it go that route. Yeah, so we'll we'll definitely see. I, but uh, I, God, I'm so wrong about any, everything I've said tonight. I don't. I, I I want I want to be excited for something like this. Oh, we all do. Yeah, definitely. We 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 will. But uh, all right, man. Uh, yeah. Oh, JSP and a lot of everybody's been telling me, you know, about the binge watching. If it's great, you watch it again. And oh no, I understand that. But uh, you're talking with somebody that I always tell Tyler, I don't watch previews of movies. And Tyler and everybody hates us when there's like a preview of like any new movie, like anytime there's something about Marvel, the new Star Wars, anything. I change the channel. I don't even watch previews. I just want to be completely excited right when I see it. So like when this cartoon, when they finally announce something, I'll look at a picture. But if there's probably any animation, I'll just say, nope, I'm just going to wait for when it comes out. I'll just see that one little picture, hear a description, and that's it. I won't even watch a preview of the cartoon if they pop one up. I'll just jump right in. Head first, straight into the water, and ready to do it when it comes out. So, so we'll see. Even if but it's uh, like really, you know, subpar, below average, substandard animation with very, you know, it sounds like something out of the Disney Channel where they've got little little bubblegum actresses playing the voices. You would rather not be told in advance that this is what we're going to be getting, and you'd rather go in and and be pulling your hair out immediately as opposed to. I get so. Just no animation. I don't want to see motion. I mean, all I want to see is a picture, a still picture. I feel like Joe has broken this rule if you offer him a trade. Because, oddly enough, to tie it back to Stranger Things, I had not watched Stranger Things yet um, when the It trailer came out. The first trailer, not the, like the first teaser trailer for the It remake came out. I was extremely impressed by it. And Joe was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to sit here and eat my Chef Warrior do out of a can, and I'm going to say you to go to hell, Tyler. I'm not watching it. So I told him, and he was like, but you got to watch Stranger Things. you got to do it. you got to do it. And I almost felt like he, there's got to be something He-Man related in this show for Joe to be so over-the-top enthusiastic about pushing me to watch it. So I said, I tell you what, I'll trade you. You watch that trailer, I promise to watch uh, Stranger Things. And, yes. You know. so, so I did. I broke my... You, if, if something comes out and you want Joe to see it, you got to offer him a trade of some kind. Joe, Joe's all about bargaining. I guess that's the only way. But uh, oh man, all right. Well, well, that was our our um, thoughts on the upcoming, you know, Shira cartoon. Like I said, hope for the best. And we started off, of course, talking about some things you find at the store. But now, like I said, we're going to do something for the holidays or Christmas special. So Tyler, why don't you tell all the fans what to do and what we're going to do? Um. We're going to be watching. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Wait, one quick thing. Dave Clark said, will the whole show uh, come out all at once or one episode at a time? Well, David, if it's like every other Netflix, yeah, if it's like all the other Netflix series, they just give it right to you. Right on a platter. Like, here you go. Watch all of it. And that's what I mean when I say people binge watch. Because when they're given that plate full of everything right in front of them, they're going to eat it all up. They're not going to enjoy that little bite by, you know, bit by bit and have the bites and enjoy well, that meal. That just... It's really, really engrossing. Yeah, you're damn right. People are going to go back and rewatch it multiple I, times. And, yeah, hopefully. But and, I'm just going to enjoy my meal. I'm going to do a little taste, a little bit by bit. If it's good, I mean, yeah, you, you, you want to sit and watch it and go back and rewatch certain episodes. And um, I mean, yeah, why, why, why can't it be more serious in tone? If, if, if Wonder Woman was, was done so well that a, a, a piece – both male and female audiences, why can't a brand new Shiva cartoon do the same? You yeah. know? I, like I said, we'll, we're going to just have to do the wait and see game. But uh, all right. Well, Tyler, now you can go ahead. Tell fans what they got to do. Um, 
the Christmas special is available on YouTube. Uh, it's on James E. Talks, the official He-Man YouTube channel, if you want to go to for it on there. Um, work the same thing on DVD. Hell, even if you got a VHS. But we, will, I, I'm starting it right when the opening shot of the Royal Palace and the snow is coming down. Like, it's the, the, the screen is black at the moment. And right when I hit play, it, it fades into the Royal Palace. So if you got your DVD... Uh, just pause it right before the actual cartoon starts. YouTube, just hit it at it, 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 zero mark, and I'll count down from three, and we'll just all hit play together. Three, two, one, play. All right, and let me see if uh, hopefully... The snow at the Royal Palace. So that's where you're seeing it, and they're panning over to the left? Is that what's happening with yours right now? Yep. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, of course, the special. Yeah, when you're a kid... And you have Christmas, and you have He Man and She all together. I mean, it's it's like a freakout mode. And you're look, you're seeing all these characters it's together. Still from... in Fountain, Stratus, Cyclone, and Pika Blue, and Cast a Spell of Frost. I mean, it, Moss Man. Every, everybody's here already. Every, it, it, poor poor broom being used as a, a broom. How degrading is that? I always felt so bad for him. Madame Raz is actually using him as a broom. It's so pitiful. I tell you, man, you, you almost feel like all of He-Man's buddies have got to be on top of the world right now with all these, like, beautiful women with multicolored hair hanging out in the Royal Palace. I'm like, they, these guys are all going home with dates tonight, man, or a after this party. And they're all celebrating uh, getting ready for the twins' birthday, correct? That's what they're doing. Yep. They Which doesn't this, it always it was initially you kind of think it's un uh, under the impression that their birthday is on Christmas, but they're going to celebrate Christmas around this this time. Uh, which obviously is very close to Christmas, if not Christmas Eve or December 23rd, when all these events take place. Yeah, you know, because I wasn't quite sure. I mean, I assumed that it was either on or, like you said, just around, because, yeah, when we see these two kids later, they're always talk they're talking about Christmas is going to be in a couple days. So, yeah, it almost gave you the impression that, yeah, the this is happening on Christmas when their birthday is the same day. But I'm not sure. I didn't know if they ever gave a, a definitive. I know in some of the other cartoon episodes, I thought they gave other dates or times there could have been birthdays for people. I thought. And uh, I guess, too, because with the Filmation canon, we're, we're, we, we we're told that, uh, you know, Prince Adam became He-Man on his 18th birthday, which means, you know, you know, Adora and Adam are probably, I'd say, probably 20. I'd like to think that the events of... He Man season one and two were when he uh, Adam was eighteen and nineteen. They're probably twenty years old on, on uh, you know during this Christmas special. Yeah, that's um, probably close. And oh, and now we see Orko is getting in the Sky Spy, and the Sky Spy is something that Man at Arms created to, of course, keep an eye on Skeletor to know what's going on. And well, of course, Orko, in typical fashion, goes in here and he's gonna. Then I'm, geez, I'm thinking this Orko, like, you know, the strongest Stralin in the universe. I mean, he just broke that handle like nothing. I mean, he just ripped it right up. Arms clearly is just is, is nothing more than a hack that I believe him to be in the filmation show where the guys just all talk and exposition. And he just, he can't seem to put, put together anything substantial. You know, it's. Well, maybe there was just some tweaks that I guess you could say that still needed to be done on that ship before it was going to be taken and shot out into space or whatever. But. And then, well, now, don't we get into, yep, here we go, the nice little quick little Christmas logo. Oh, man, like I said, when this came on TV, just, you freaked out. Like I said, it's Christmas and He-Man is here. It's like, you couldn't hate this as a kid. You know, sure, there's parts in this special, I'm sure when it comes up, we'll get to that we probably didn't like as much when we were kids, and maybe now as adults, maybe don't like more now, or don't like at all, and love more. But, um, yeah, when I was just a kid, it was just freak out mode. You know, you didn't see this many. I mean, who would ever thought you'd see Christmas on Eternia or Etheria or wherever? You'd never think that this combination happened. But now well, we got. And I got to see this as a, kid, as a kid and knowing everybody that's in this thing, because at this yeah. point I hadn't seen too bad Spike or and Rat Lore in any of He Man and She Ra at all, period. You know, not Snout Spout and Fisto. Because when I saw the commercial for this on the USA, it was 1989. And, you know, I wouldn't see it till I was in 11th grade when I, I got a bootleg set of all, all the cartoons in this Christmas special. I, I, I'd have lost my shit, excuse me. But that, that's what would have happened. I, I, it, to, for, that's what, I mean, that's one of the big perks about this special is that they made sure they included so many cameos. of. And they put, I mean, this was loaded. But also, I mean, I guess in perspective, at least from that view, 
Did you see how big the collector looked next to the yeah, sky spy? No, really, really puts the collector in, in scale. You know, just, just yeah, how big that ship Which, is. It, exactly, because then it makes you think, God. If we ever got a version in toy form, I mean, it would have had to be massive. And then Laser Bolt. We finally yeah. got to see Laser Bolt. It was really cool. I love that damn Laser Bolt. God, I love it. When I seen it just, yeah, in here, I, I mean, I was freaking out. with. But, of course, I remember I kept thinking, how's it flying? But you know what? When I was a kid, I didn't care. All I was thinking was, it's Laser Bolt. So, I, like I don't know how many. All the evil warriors here. And I, 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 I yeah. like the idea, even though it's, it's technically wrong from the show standpoint. Rattler fits in with this group because Rattler is with King is technically with King Hiss. King Hiss hangs out with Skeletor, so to me, it's not far fetched at all for Rattler to be sitting in the cockpit of the Collector here. Yeah, I mean, plus, like you said, I mean, they're just you know jamming a lot of characters into just you know one episode. So uh, I can't stress enough though how much I hate Spike Orr's voice. I mean, it's, well, I don't know who's worse in this scene. Too bad. Too or bad. Spike Orr. I'm gonna, gonna give it to Spike Orr. Maybe fans would have to vote on that, but. Oh, I mean, Two Beds was bad. His was Simpleton like, but Spike or, whew, yeah, they, a... they were getting lazy in the recording studio with Spike or. I mean, God, it's just, it was like it, like the machine messed up when they were recording Lou Scheimer's voice, and they just ah hell, go with that. Yeah, it, it was it was painful, but uh, well, we see you, you know, know he made it with the collectors have been given a makeover on the inside because you you remember the how the collector looked in earlier episodes where it's only got one chair. And it's just like a big open space. Now it's got this, you know. Was it drawn that big in the earlier episodes? That massive? Because not, this... not on the inside. I mean, the inside looks a hell of a lot bigger here than it did in like you know Colossal Awakes, and uh, you know Island of Fear. You know, just to name a couple of episodes. Yeah. Here comes a double punch, brother and yeah. sister are gonna do the cool. bam. I like seeing Shira do because you know we're used to Shira doing her spin kick. You know, she's got yeah. the spin kick. He has got the punch, but. They got to do the double punch there, so that was kind of cool. But, okay, now Orko, here we go. Time to see what he's going to do to, I guess, mess things up. But, you know, hey, that's what makes this episode and part of the show and where we lead to everything else. He's trying his magic on this ship to get out of there, and uh, well, he's going to get out of there one way or another. Not in the way he's thinking, though. But this, Oh, wait, this part was... This, this us. We're watch, watching the laser bolt fly along swift. When that's one what... You just, what, what, Joe? That's what I was just going to say. I was like, wait, what happened there with the laser bolt? Just sitting there flying right next to Swift when it's just floating the whole time. <laughs> oh, there's the poor Spike Orr boy. The, the parachute, you know, the, if you're, yeah. Yeah, he gets all of them out of there. And but I yeah. mean, I'm sure it'd be a cool piece of animation to own this panning shot of all four evil warriors hanging on to each other. I, I absolutely love to have this piece of animation. I mean, it just... Does James E. Talk have a lot of the Christmas cells? I don't know if I've ever really seen him post Christmas. I, I want to say I don't know. He posted a full shot of this on on uh, on um, I think his blog website. I, I've seen it before, and I, I always want to give him credit when it comes to stuff like okay. that. It's, it's, and we can all breathe in space. Some episodes we can't, but here, yeah, yeah. it's just one of those things where I mean, there are, there are no rules. There's no restrictions. It's like a it's like a wrestling match, you know, in, in the late WCW where you just go in there, throw people in there, just do whatever, fill in the space and expect people to buy it. And of course, this is meant for, you know, five, six, four year old kids. You're going to buy the laser bolt flying in space. You're going to buy Heman and she breathing in space. You're going to you're going to buy everything. Hell, I, I would have bought everything had I seen this at age five. That's what I mean. Uh, you just picture everything that they shoved into this episode. If you'd seen all of them in this, it went to the stores, you would want probably everything if you didn't already have it. I mean, this was definitely going to bring you into the stores that want more. <laughs> Especially, you know, like I said, I think that's why they shoved the laser bolt in because that's pretty much it after that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't recall because the He-Man show had been done, but at this point, He-Man's doing crossover appearances in, in She-Ra, so that's why Snout Spout and the Rock Warriors show up in that show as opposed to, uh, you know, the He-Man show. Yeah. Uh, and now we have Orko. He's... Doing a little Ghostbusters, uh, Filmation Ghostbusters reference there, I think. Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, I never thought of that. I guess, yeah, I guess so. It's weird. I did. I never paid attention to that. Wait, I mean, is that just the hype the theory of yours, or was that actually said somewhere? I, I remember I, 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 when I saw it, and then I, I saw James E. Talk, I think, had pointed that out, too. Is And it, it may have just been a coincidence, but, you know, we all know James has got all that info about the Filmation series and probably um, 
probably is, I mean, it may be written in, in the, in the uh, storyboards, you know, just a fun little, you know, nod to uh, filmation and Ghostbusters series, but. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I didn't know that. And it's good to see that at least Oracle's magic works here and maybe even works yeah, better. It works on earth, man. God, man, what else could he do on earth? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, how we, we know on journey, he's got issues with that, but you'd figure, you know, the, I, you know, and like you said, this is, of course, for kids, so the kids ain't freaked out. But I was thinking, man, if I've seen a little flying creature, I know what I had some crazy reaction. They're just pretty much like, hey, you know, like when they see him, it's just so relaxed, laid back. Like it's just a bunch. I was a kid. If I, you know, and I was, when you would see movies where little creatures are running around with children, I, I immediately think, or immediately thinking, that, man, that'd be badass. I wish I had a little buddy like that running around with me when I was five, six years old. So if I what happened to be wandering around, at Riverlawn Elementary going sleigh riding with my brother and Orko shows up. I'm like, by God, man, he's going home with me. We gotta hide him from mom and dad. You know, yeah. I don't oh, it, be it, running. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I might have been a, a a little spooked. And you'd think, wait, this is coming from the guy that's watching Friday the thirteenth and Halloween when he's a kid. But um <laughs> oh I mean I'd still think it might spook me, but uh, like you said, that's just it's just a cartoon. So you know you don't want to read too deep into that. But now they know that Orko is in that damn ship because they found the book laying by that they, ship. They need a carrium water crystal, which people ah. who are familiar with Brave Star carrium. There is yeah. a, that that's your link to He Man and Brave Star is carrium. Oh man, uh, some more of what could have been if you know He Man could have God, continued. We, that could have been such a great uh, thing for formation to do. Like I mean, unfortunately, if He Man hadn't hit a drop when it did, for them to use He Man as a uh, uh, jumping off point for Brave Star. Yeah, because remember that was planned in some of those early notes that we've seen that was posted yeah. by, I think, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what well, could have been. Yeah, always the, yeah, exactly, the what could have been. And then now are we getting the explanation of Christmas time? Or, and that's what uh, the kids are doing with Oracle here is letting them know about Christmas. Yeah, the very, the, the, which they, they touch on, uh, you know, Pretty pretty much the all the basics of Christmas. They don't they don't shy away. Yeah, and oh, and now uh, of course Marlena recognizes the coordinates for Earth. So now they here, like you said, they need that carrium water crystal. That's the only way to teleport uh, that device and Oracle or whatever back to Eternia. And at least thank goodness Adora knows, though she figures Mermista might be able to know where something like that is at. And of course it'll be on Etheria. So that's good. It's like now we're getting a theory into the cartoon. So it ain't just Eternia. It's not just Earth. We're getting a theory too. So you're getting the three E's of all the planets. Yeah, the three E's. <laughs> that's right. They never really thought of it. There, there you go. But yeah, the kid, you're right. But the kids, you're right. They're describing about you know like uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they mentioned Bethlehem, but I know they uh, mentioned of uh, uh, Santa Claus, and eventually they'll sing Jingle Bells. I don't know if they just did, but. Uh, I remember that I was like, that's the only words to this song is jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells, because they never went jingle all the way. That, well, used to get... that may have been like, like a public de like a public domain issue. Like some songs you can say sing and not have to worry about it, but jingle bells is probably owned by some somebody that ah, never thought of that. Again, as a kid, you never think of those things, but uh there we go. Oh, wait a second, uh wait, uh, I thought somebody said something. Uh, Ivan, hey, you watch, under you watch this sheer transformation, man. I hope to God whatever is in that new Shira series is is something epic like this, because this is I mean, epic. Like you, you can't go from anything less than that. You, you just can't. So, yeah, it better be hardcore. And Ivan in the chat room said the coordinates that we just looked at. He said were Filmation's phone number and address. I, I didn't know that. That's what the coordinates actually were. Oh huh. yeah, I remember reading about that. Yeah. Ah, well, thanks, thanks for sharing that. I even I had no clue. Yeah, I pointed like, that out. Yeah, I guess well, you know, I, there's a lot of things I haven't read, and well, I guess that's a cool little tidbit. You always figure certain numbers maybe are specific, but never would have known that. So, well, now yeah, here we go. We we're back to Oracle, back to the kids again, but now we're gonna go finally to Etheria. So, and plus, hey, we get to see. I, I, you know, I always loved Mermista's voice. She always sounded so sexy. I thought she sounded just. Well, you hell, know, all Huber's friends are sexy as hell. I mean, no, uh, their yeah. voice. Their, I loved her voice. She had, she well, has. I'm, a I'm, but I'm saying overall in general, like, like uh, I mean, all the voices from from Marmista, Castaspella, Pika Blue, because I think Marmista well, has what, kind of a uh, French accent, doesn't she? Well, I don't know. What doesn't one of them isn't like perf perfumer? One of them has a weird voice, like ooh, the kids. Or she, well, she 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 would be the one I would least likely want to go out with. 
<laughs> yeah, there was one that just had a, a Tim I mean, Witt voice. I but... Wouldn't, but she wouldn't be at the top of my, my, my list of women from uh, Ethereum to date. Like, I, you know, obviously, I, I definitely would want to go out of the door, probably top of the line. Well, no, Frost, Frost would be my number one. And then, uh, and then Adora. It's a shame Frost doesn't get in a Christmas related episode. Frost he gets given nothing to do. Yes, yeah, that it's a perfect. Nothing. Exactly. Talk about a no brainer. It's like okay, she should have been there, especially for anything snow related. Right there. Yeah, instead of getting perfume to do like you know to have snow show up. But uh, yeah. we're, we're approaching this particular sequence here. Um, and this is the beast monster that's supposed to guard the carrium water crystal. So yeah. while She-Ra is to distract this... Vaguely beast... resembles the toy. It, it's, you know, if you hadn't been told what it was, you probably wouldn't have made the connection. But now that you... Just a, very, very little in the face, does this resemble the, the hand puppet that came with the Fright Zone playset? And even it, that's a stretch. Yeah, that's a stretch. Why? is that? Was it said that was supposed to be the monster from the... It was. It's the beast monster, which that's that's what the hand puppet with the Fright Zone is. Called. I mean, I mean, it, it's... They did a lot of name drops of things from toys to cartoon to differences, because as we'll see later, there's going to be one thing that, woo, definitely ain't toy, toy-like at all. And we'll, we'll save that oh. big old uh, climax for a little bit later, but um, <laughs> well, at least... She did what she had to do. She had to keep that sucker distracted while Marista got the crystal. And, well, she did her job, and as you're going to see here in a second, so uh, so did uh, Marmista. And, uh, well, hey, uh, Christopher Dahlberg, thank you for joining us. He said he's got to go, going to uh, uh, take a nap, but he'll get back to it. But uh, thanks for joining us, Christopher. Thanks we for joining that. us, bud. Yeah. But, uh, you, well, here we go. Yep. Joe? What's that? Would you date a mermaid? Hey, it worked in – um. Uh, Splash, it could work. You don't know. She might be able to get legs when she gets out of water. It's it's a possibility. <laughs> she might be able to get laid when she gets out of water. <laughs> no, I said no. I said legs, legs. <laughs> oh boy, no legs. Yeah, that, yeah. When I when I saw this for the first time, and, and they they mentioned monster, I'm like, what oh. the hell is this? Did I I can't explain to you how much even as a kid, I hated these suckers because yes. When they're referred to as the monstroids, I'm like, where? I was like, I, I got the monstroid toy, you know, and it looks nothing like this. I mean, I love the monstroids spinning, you know, grabbing any of his enemies and just spin them around. I was like, these things? But obviously this is definitely, hey, if people want to pick on the Meteor saying they're a basic ripoff of Transformers or capitalizing, no, no, no. I'm not going to ever put the Meteors in that category. I'm going to put these suckers as Transformer ripoffs and horrible ones at that. Because when you see them transform later, I'm like, oh, that was dramatic transformation. I mean, basically it looks like, hey, I lift up my arms. I transformed. Hell, I could transform. I just did it. <laughs> what? These things are terrible. I, I felt like this was something that was designed, you know, before like Mattel got involved and could you include this and could you include that and watch it look at this uh, look at this transformation he holds the sirens up goes down like whoa eat your heart out Optimus Prime <laughs> and watch this guy he just stretches woo that was oh dear God he's just things lazy and and to call him monster is it was almost like yeah sure Mattel well well We'll we'll make sure we include monstroids and just just call these generic robots we threw in this cartoon monstroids. Right. I mean, we should have had the monstroid that that bastard. I mean, he would have been a bad one. And, 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 and I got the box right next to me, right over here. I'm looking. Had that thing risen out of the water or underground? <sighs> God, yeah. boy, that that have been. Of course, as a kid, had I seen this at age five, I did, I wasn't aware of monstroid. I had never heard or seen pictures of them or anything. So I I would have forgiven all of that because I wouldn't have wouldn't have been aware of it. But by the time I saw this, I was aware of of Monstroid, of course. And I I just thought, oh, oh God, I don't I don't 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 like this. Don't like it at all. Well, there's some fans. Ivan and Tom Charlton, they both like those suckers. And Tom even said, well, he I mean, likes... and that's perfectly fine. I, I, no, I, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're not we're not saying it was just disappointing. It, it, had they not called it Monstroid, it wouldn't have been bothersome. Because I, I, the robots themselves are fine. It's calling yeah. them something that we know damn well is not Monstroid. Right. Oh, and here we go. As long as Oracle remembers to go into the light. Like, you know, go into the light, Oracle. But I always thought, now that's weird. He has to go into the light to then 
make the entire ship and then even the Christmas tree win. I was like, but why? I mean, why, if you had the coordinates and it was on the ship, why didn't just, why did Oracle have to go into the light to bring the ship? That's if why the I just coordinates didn't get. are what help create the light where they're at. Yeah, I just figured since the light is but in the you, ship, you it should have to defend this Christmas special. Here you are trying to find that, flaws in it, like you like like just that Potter part is always known to do. No, no, that part you drive me nuts. But I did like how the first thing Orko did when he got back onto Eternity, he flew right to a door. Didn't say anything to Adam Man at Arms. He flew right to. Of course, he's going to. He's like, there's a door. The yeah, he don't he don't get many chances to get a hug from a door. So, and here we go, the, the mysterious. Yeah, the mysterious Horde Prime. You know, I'm not the, talking about Horde the, Prime's the, hair. I'm talking about Adora's hair. No, I'm I'm going back to Horde. I'm going to Horde Prime now. Oh well, yeah, her hair was good. But now here's the mysterious. As you want to say, man behind the curtain. You can say the Doctor Claw of Etheria. I mean, it's it's Horde Prime. We never really knew what he looked like. Of course, we eventually get a crazy figure that that definitely wouldn't have that been. That was Horde it, Prime. But, you know, over or underwhelming as a you know a melted ice cube. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if Dave Clark is serious, but he said the color scheme on those monsters is breathtaking. <laughs> I think he, I think he was being sarcastic. At least I hope you were, Dave Clark. Well, if, if you weren't, uh, they, I mean, they, they, they look like your basic robots. But if you think, if if you were being sarcastic, then yes, absolutely. Yeah, because they're all bland. They're all the same color. It's like, whew, man, that was yeah, it was a bad stuff. So, well, now these kids, uh, yeah, they can't get back to Earth now. <laughs> Yeah, they got to wait two days for the the water crystal to charge. So they're going to be stuck here for two days on Eternia. And of course, now Horde Prime senses this this horrible new good has to find out where this good's from, you know, coming from. And that's all the, the Christmas spirit from these two little kids. That I mean, it, it's so cool to see him, Hordak and Skeletor standing. I mean, of course, Skeletor's you know about ready to piss himself right now. But it, it's still cool to see these two, you know, together face to face like this in a in a situation that's not where they're directly, even though they are opposing each other right now, but they're they're being told to essentially work towards achieving the same goal. Not not a direct team up, but it's it's just cool to see them together like this. Yeah, and of course, each one going to try to top the other to see who can you know do it first, impress Horde Prime. Yeah. Yeah. Hard for me to picture for them to actually team up, period. Like, you know, it's always cool to see villains team up in comic books, but these two are are two villains. Like, I just hell, if somebody told me to like, hey, here, do a do a story of a team, I'm like, I wouldn't want to do that. I, I, that that to me, that's oh. not their dynamic. Their dynamic is to kill each other, hate each other. Yes, yeah, so speaking of hating each other and hating things, prepare for one thing. Even probably the most as a kid. I hated this. I just, I hated this part. I love the cartoon, but all oh, what's what's coming up, uh, you know, for everybody out there, prepare yourself, is going to be a very, very interesting song that I guess you just immediately know. Bo's like, I just wrote a new Christmas song. You know, like the here, here it goes. And then bam, they're, they're all singing the songs like, how do you know this song? He just said, I just made this song up. Oh, this is painful. I don't know if I should have a moment. Uh, even when I first saw this, I, I immediately fast forwarded through this scene. Like I didn't sit down and watch this at all in 11th grade. I said, oh, I'm not wow. watching this. No this, way. It was bad. You know, I didn't flip over many, you know, kids for some reason, I didn't go nuts over certain songs, but this was I hated songs as a kid. I didn't like listening to them. Yeah, that was, it was just horrible trying to make a new song and then Oracle and Kyle dancing in the air. It's like, oh, just please make this nightmare go away. This was the part that, yes, as a kid, I just never want to see every other thing I mentioned, even joking and picking on some stuff. I still like even those horrible monsters. I still, yes, like seeing them, but not but that. I will say that this contraption from the horde is like it looks just pitiful. I mean, it, it was just you know like what were they, couldn't they come up with some or why couldn't they use a, a, a like a large bat mech instead of this? I don't know what to describe this like, as. I just, it looks like a big penis, essentially. I, I, I was trying to be nice. I didn't, was, I didn't want to say it, but I was almost going to say, this is like a, well, never mind. Yeah, it's. I mean, at least you get a cameo by Modulock and Multibot here. And, hey, you know, there I am. It's just it's just such a lazy design for something that the Horde takes pride in is their technology and, and aircraft. And this is what you get. 
it's painful. I mean, just the shape of that ship and then the stupid propeller on the top, like a helicopter. It's like, that was a very, very bad design. Like you said, there's been many other ships used throughout the cartoon that they should have used, but that thing, I don't know what they were thinking of. It was, yeah, it was a hot mess. But at least, well, as you've seen, you know, the kids now uh, have been captured. So is Orko. And upcoming is some things that, as a kid, I did like. I know one person in particular hates these one things that, you know, you'll see later that'll be coming up. But um, I like, not these, not the monstroids. We'll get to that later. But I like how the monstroids, like, don't like anybody in their te territory, even the hordes. Like, they don't want nothing around them. So it's like, yeah, what? Was I, I hate seeing, you know, the horde being depicted as, as, like, having to, you know, run scared, you know, because due to these, you know, one-shot robots that we will, you know, would never show up again. And, um, and what's their purpose? I mean, what kind of domination were just these robots going to want anyways? It's like, I understand, but I guess they wanted to be their own faction to rule things with no affiliation to anything, but... I guess if they could have looked more intimidating or something or been called something else, maybe, eh, but... Eh, it almost feels like they, they were playing down the evil of both sides as if, like, I mean, I mean, here we got Hordak doing, a, like, a Looney Tunes run. I hate... See, that's I mean, what I hate. It makes you feel like because the robots are doing more of the evil work in this episode as opposed to what you'd expect from Hordak and Skeletor. Uh, it, you know, it just almost feels like they were trying to tone down a lot of the, I guess you, as you would call violence. With I didn't there. like that Looney Tunes stuff. I never did in any of the cartoons when they start doing that, you know, running in place and weird. No, I love it in Looney Tunes, but I, I don't need to see it in He-Man. And I don't yeah. want to see Ordak running like that either. Yeah, I like Pika Blue's, like, you know, mystic eyes to be able to see stuff. I, I always like that feature from her. That was That's pretty cool to where she gets. Yeah, yeah, it's... It, her, I mean, most of Shiva's pals are. I mean, they they've all got legitimate powers. Whereas Perfuma is strictly is just stuck with the gimmick for girls to. She smells nice, you know. Even though us guys, we had Mossman and Stinkor, you, you kind of feel like you had, obviously you could do a hell of a lot more with them. Whereas Perfuma, I mean, do the girls use Perfuma to engage in battles with Catra as kids? Yeah, well, I'm sure they did. They probably use their imagination. But now, here we go. Here come. Here comes uh, some things that I like. These are the man scenes, and here comes Cutter. Now, James Etock hates, he hates the man scenes, if I'm not mistaken. But Well, they don't look like they belong in a He-Man or, or She-Ra cartoon, period. Like, they look out of place. They, they don't look like the, the, the style. And it was still cool. First, let me say hello to Eric Glenn. He joined us in the chat room. Thanks for joining us, Eric. But, um... I just like the thought of, okay, there's a whole assortment of these crazy little things. And then I'm going to bring up one thing about um, this next mansion. And this is, I think, a zipper or something like mm, zipper. And you remember how I said Buzz Off reminded me of Bill Cosby, you see? Oh, I think God, zipper. Don't, don't bring that up again. <laughs> well, man. I'm going to say it. Zipper sounds the same way. Like, yeah, oh, zipper, do. He's Bill Cosby. I'm telling you, Bill Cosby was probably snuck in there and did the voices. Nobody knew it. Or he was inspiration for Buzz Off and Zipper. I don't care. I'm well, saying. If only he'd been doing an ad for Kodak Film and Jello Pudding, we would have, you know, you know, it, it would have been, it, you know, you couldn't avoid the, the, okay, clearly he's trying to be the cause here. Yep. And why did Zipper, he was going, he got the hell out of there. He was, and he goes right back to, I, I always got confused. Like, wait a second, you just escaped them. Why did you go directly towards the monstroids? You went right back to the monstroids. So, I don't know. That one kind of has a Hordak robot face, that one that they kind of showed in a way, but eh, that was yep. my thought. Talking about. Yeah. But, well, at least here we go. Here comes Manta. Get rid of these godforsaken things. Oh, they're just man. I was like, look, look, I mean, what in God's name is this? Look at this thing. I don't even understand what I'm looking at. I just, I don't get the design. It's so stupid. Look at that thing. I mean, it looked like a moving bridge or, or I don't know. So when you go under a tunnel, I don't. Oh man. <laughs> kind of looks like those. Uh, I, I don't know. It's like really drawing a really obscure reference, but they're the they're like in Double Dragon Battletoads uh, for Super Nintendo. There's like this ball, like 
ball chain hand right. comes out of the spaceship to attack it. That's what that thing looked like. I, that's some <laughs> kind of reference I just pulled up. Right. Yeah. I even said it looked like a fridge with claws. Yeah, I gave it to you, Ivan. It sure did. It's just so bad. Oh, man. I was always <laughs> just so glad this would be over with the with the monstroids. Well, see, look, look. This is this is about the only one on, on like actually action that Chira and Heman engage in with other things is yeah. the robots. You don't see them interacting with the Horde and Skeletor and the Evil Warriors. It's yeah. like that's why I almost feel like that's what these robots are here for is for Heman and Shira to kick ass and to crush and destroy since they're not going to be able to. Yeah, but it's, since it's a Christmas episode, they're not going to harm any people. Right, right. So they just yeah. So I can understand I mean, the camera. Hell, I mean, the horde troopers aren't even featured in this. I mean, well, they are, but uh, you know they're they're used very very little as opposed to all this robot. And maybe hell, maybe Filmation was trying to come up with something that Mattel would be interested in marketing. With yeah, the do you think that? Do you think those machines maybe would have been thought of being made? Because they sure showed a lot of those suckers. They, those they are given a, a, a quite a pivotal uh, spot in, in this special, and yeah, it makes you kind of feel like. Were there plans, especially with with uh, relay here? Oh, look at that little relay! I, I've made him quite a few times for people, but yeah, I I would have liked all the. I'll admit it. I don't care if people think I'm nuts. I would have loved all those little machines. They would have been so gimmicky, cool. Like you said, if one could have shot a string, the one battered with you know battering amp the head. Others got on you know little zipper to ride. I mean, cuttered with. I mean, I think they would actually have been cool. I don't know if every I, one of those. I, I mean, I wouldn't have wondered as of right now. Like, I'd it'd be cool if they threw in a real. If they threw in one in one man machine with the classics line, like it has to be relay. Thing, I'd yeah. be cool with that, but I don't. I that's something, you know. I, I know I, I would not be asking for anything more than that, and I wouldn't be asking for it to begin with. But if it was thrown in, that's fine. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, yeah, I think relay is a no brainer. And seeing as he came, yeah, with, no, uh, I would like to relay. That's for sure. I, I would yeah, like to have that to put on my shelf back here. Yeah, because which uh, which one of those sideshow collectible stat uh, uh, statues did relay come with? Remember, wasn't he made for one of those oh, statues? Yeah. Um, Damn, was uh, it was I, it Orco? No, it wasn't Orco. Um, Hordak? I, I don't know. Things are so expensive. I just look at it real quick and just tell myself, don't even think about it and just keep moving. Right, I was like, those look great. Can't afford them, but they are freaking awesome looking. But yeah, so that's, I guess, the one time we've seen Relay in some kind of like, I don't know, figure form. It was a statue form. But Skeletor, well, Skeletor got them little kids. He got them suckers now. Yeah, see, Hordak's flying around in the Bat Mech all of a sudden when they were, you know, they had that, that giant, you know, boner that they were flying around in. <laughs> the, the, the giant boner shoe or whatever. Like, where was the bat mech to begin with? You should have been flying around in that. Yeah, I couldn't have pictured that other thing as a vehicle to buy. I'd get the bat mech, but that other flying thing. The uh, battle boner. The battle boner. They go with battle. Well, we got battle bones, you got battle boner. I don't know. Just change that S to an R. There you go. But, oh, here we go. They got shot down and now it's Skeletor walking with the two little kids. The, the inevitable I am not nice, you know, in a transformation here of the, which I almost feel like the way Skeletor is portrayed in popular culture now is like, it's just kind of the silly buffoon that I almost feel like this is kind of what people will think of is, is this version of Skeletor that's, you know, even though he's playing it up, telling these kids, I don't care if you're cold, move your ass. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to leave this little little animal to freeze to death intentionally. But um, I, as I told if, you before, this as a kid, I would have thought this was really, really cool. I, oh, I, I loved I, it. I, I, that's how I would have thought for him yeah. to be nice to these kids and to pick Relay up and, and carry him. I, I'd have been all about that as a child. I really, oh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it so many times before. I, when I was a kid, I always was fascinated when you would see the bad guy do something good. Because while you know, yes, he is not going to permanently be good, there was this part of me that always hoped, man, maybe he'll be good. Just like when Evil Lynn teamed up with T, I was like, oh, man, maybe she'll be good. And, oh, I loved it then, and I still love it now. I love that. It, it like, gives you chills, you know, the thought of Skeletor just help these little kids, you know, the ones freezing. And, and now they're looking at him like, you know, he's such a great, nice person. And, Oh, yeah, I love those moments. I, I still do. And then poor little, oh, that, that poor little relay. 
that that little thing right there. Yeah, they they the 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 voice and the the sound of the whimpering for relay here in a moment. It, it's it's quite quite pitiful that you you just you know like the the flopping in the snow there and it's I mean this is not a virgin skeleton I would ever want to see again but for this uh, you know I do enjoy it it goes against everything that I stand for in the Master of the Universe but I enjoy it like like this this little close up a relay here because I'm a softie for animals especially dogs yeah and. Uh, I enjoy Skeletor being, being sim sympathetic to this this cute little dog like uh, character. It was you know, cute and him freaking see. out here. You know what the hell's wrong with me here? Mm -hmm. And the different, yeah, you see different facial expressions, almost, yeah, because you think how <laughs> how can you do that with a skull face? But it works. It, it works. works. For the it's like drawing Spider Man in the comic books, you can draw emotion because he's wearing a mask, but you you do stuff with the eyes to emphasize emotion. So it works. You know, you, it's one of those things that you know in animation you you allow. Yeah, and then don't the little kids and there he goes relay licking Skeletor for helping him. And I, I yeah. could I could buy if this was done in continuity that the idea that it, whenever this time of year would come around again and Skeletor like on the anniversary of Christmas on eternity would reflect like, you know what? We're not going to attack today. People, you guys got the day off. I'm not paying you, but you got the day off. Yeah. You know, we're not, you know, almost trying to, you know, uh, hide the idea that, you know what? I enjoy what I did last year, but I don't want people to know <laughs> why or what I was doing or. Yeah. Cause he finds out about the whole Christmas yeah. you know spirit and season and everything but this again as a kid this is the part i like i was like check it out like you know skeletor like get behind me and skeletor is gonna take care of business it just it was cool so damn cool to see skeletor fighting to defend these kids it's like he's like he man now uh, using his they just called it an ice hacker because that's what it is it's an ice hacker from the dragon's gift yeah yeah i, I just meant I loved it though. I just, I always love that part. You know, when Skeletor like get behind me, he's yeah. taking that sucker out. Like I said, it was heroic. And as yeah, a, a kid, smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that smile. <laughs> and then he gets really angry at what the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he said, oh shoot. I, I, yeah, I love that part. And like I said, you knew it wasn't going to last and happen all the time, but it, it was just cool to see. I was such a sucker for that as a kid. And I still, like I said, I still appreciate that even now. But yeah, when you're a kid, you you like seeing that because you know you're always seeing, oh man, that's the main villain, and how's he man gonna stop the villain? And this time, the villain's being a good guy. It was it was so bizarre and different. I think that's what made this special even more memorable. Like I said, there's the things he had joked about earlier, and things that yes, I could have a problem with, but all together, all around, this is still a, it's a fun it's a far, fun cartoon. It's a fun episode, and oh yeah, and, and these things we need were, were these ever name dropped these. Flying Harley Davidson. I'm sure they were given a name, but they're not mentioned in this. I'm sure in the script that they're, they're given, and they look cool. I yeah, love them. I, oh, we need these in classics yeah. to have the Horde Harleys. That's what they look like. They yeah, look the like. Horde. Well, no, the Horde Harleys are what Dilemma was riding around in in Duel at Devlin. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah. they look like biker gang. I mean, this is like a you know, the equivalent of that as well. So yeah, but yeah, Horde Harley has a has a nice ring to it. Yeah, damn this man to talk about the army building just have a bunch yeah. of them on it. Man, those would be some cool or choppers. Yeah, you do the chopper. Oh, no, sorry. don't do any god awful Arnold impressions. <laughs> it pisses me off when people do that. He's like, dang it, because I love Arnold. Don't do that. But hey, at least now we're getting some. Can't do it right ever. Okay, cute and funny. It's like, shut the hell up. <laughs> right, well now we got hey now we got some horror troopers we were asking for them earlier we got some yes. horror troopers we got they multi here and they're, they're they are getting the hell beat out of them here boom yeah they they tried to make it cool like they they got to do their spear the version of spear they speared she and he-man but of course yeah i, I like this how relay's trying to run around yeah and i like when relay's trying to wake up skeletor you know because need some help Got to wake up the dude. Now, look at look at all them horror troopers that have just been disposed of. So, oh, and there's another spear. It's like we've just seen it one way, seen it another way. It must be a fan of Edge and Rhino. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or they were the fans of this cartoon, and they said, I'm oh, going to do that but one Edge and Rhino saw the uh, the, the Hemisphere Christmas special. Like, That's going to be my finishing move. I'm going to do that when I grow up and become a wrestler. I'm going to spear them like the horror troopers. <laughs> right. 
Uh, here we go. See, now got to get Skeletor oh, away. That cute little reaction, really, just like the little gloves smiling. <laughs> Skeletor yeah. wakes up. Stuff like, yeah, stuff like that gets to me. I yeah. like it. And I love how he saves, got to save the children. It's like, wow, look at that. Look at that good Christmas feel. Still doing it. Yeah, just keep hoard prying the middle finger. Yep, right up there. You take that right back to you. So, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, JSP and Goldberg. Yeah, Goldberg was probably a big... Yeah, uh, yeah Goldberg. Goldberg definitely is, is guilty of that, for sure. Yeah, he's the one that he definitely said, I like the Horde Troopers. Couldn't call him Hordeberg, though. Know, so, yeah, Goldberg. Yeah. There we go. So now they're going after the big ship. Because it's it went down thanks to Skeletor, who's now being targeted by Horde Prime. So here we go. He's he's ready to take him out, but well, time to time to return a favor that they don't even know they're doing because they don't even know the good that really Skeletor just did. But he and she were about ready to take Horde Prime and send him back into space. And there he goes. There goes that ship. And there goes him screaming. And he's sent out of there. So then we'll get back to skill. Quite overwhelmed with with pain and agony because he didn't think to you know turn you know hit the controls to. But I guess that's the strength of He-Man and She-Ra. It's like they're they're throwing the ship so fast that the, the ship can't stop and register. You know <laughs> what's yeah. going on. And I love that. I love He-Man's reaction. Like what? You know, like when he's seeing that. You yeah, know, he saved you. <laughs> yeah, like what's going on? That was it. Was a cool moment. And then you just see like Skeletor sitting there, kind of just a. Well, you know, well, they all kind of little laugh a little bit. He doesn't like this at all. But it was weird just seeing them all together. It's not like they weren't even thinking about, okay, Skeletor, now we're going to take you. It's like they realized he did something good. It's like they were all buddies just hanging out right there at the end. Yeah. I thought that was a weird little kind of like ending. Oh, they... here's the great painting shot with Snouts about putting the star on the tree. Oh, man, I remember seeing that in the, in the commercial as a kid. There's See? Lizard Man, Mechanic, and Buzz Off, and Moss, and Mo Seahawk. There's Loki! Oh. Montork. Yeah, Mont yeah, Montork and Driel are back there too. Yeah, and look and look, we have Santa Claus. See, you thought Santa Claus wouldn't be in this special for all the kids that were watching. There you go. Santa Claus is in this episode. And he gave those kids some special little belts. These are belts that man, if I this is what I did love more than anything. It's like, oh my God. I remember when I did see this, as much as I didn't even like those kids as a kid, I thought. They're the luckiest kids in the world. First, they got to go to Eternia and meet everybody that you've always dreamed you could meet. But they got these special belts, these flying belts. I, I thought those were so cool. I mean, what kid didn't wish they could fly? You know, it's kind of like kind of like in the live action movie where they're they're the Julie and Kevin are given a souvenir before they head home. And these kids are given a souvenir before they head home too. Yeah. And then now they're sent back to their mother who looks like Super Mario and some other woman. And every one of these people have different colored hair. It makes you wonder if these were the real parents or something or these kids were adopted. Little suckers. No. <laughs> like, these are like foster parents, kind of like in Child's Play too. You know, they're, they're just right. kind of like kids. And... She's got dark hair. He's got black hair. The kids got brown hair. The girl's got blonde hair. It's like, hey, uh, you know, it all works. <laughs> everybody here i guess like just get every hair color in the world for this family it just it just somehow works but yeah i like the part where you know the bad one and they go fly i love when they fly by the parents and then their reactions oh man i wish i had those when I was, look at that again you wish you could have that as a kid and see now you got santa sitting next to adora and you got relay everybody all did ah oh, son of a gun it was adam all along See, well, the kids, that if you were watching there, we, no, we find out we got suckered. We thought it was Santa Claus. It wasn't. Merry Christmas, everybody. It's, it's it's a good special. It's got some moments that do make you groan and stuff like that. But overall, the, the Christmas, it, it's a fun little special. It's it's innocent. It's it's you know it's sweet. It's 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 meant to celebrate Christmas. It's not it's not going to be like you know. Die Hard or Relief the Weapon or Invasion USA of, of Christmas cartoons, <laughs> but you know it's it's fun. Yeah, I mean honestly, yeah i I never hated this as a kid. I don't hate it as an adult, and I know it has mixed reactions. And you know, there's different fans that some love it, some hate it. But I can it, honestly it's be hard to show to someone who's a He Man fan but has never seen it and doesn't know a whole lot about the cartoon. This is something that you really can't show. Any new human, because I feel like it, it. Obviously, the 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 
the um, the tone of this show is not what we, you know, you know, kind of have come to know about the filmation show. This is something that you almost kind of feel like either you love all '80s animation, you can appreciate all forms of it, or um, hardcore He-Man fans because it's it's not something you would. Sh- I wouldn't show. I wouldn't recommend this to a newcomer who's come watching He-Man. Oh, no, no, I, I absolutely. I mean, if it's just something brand new, like, here you go. You definitely don't want to feed anybody a Christmas special of anything. Like, no, go back, watch the original stuff, watch all the episodes, He-Man, she then enjoy the cartoon. And then I'm sure they can get, you know, yeah, just you almost what... have to work your way out to it because the show started so serious at times and then gradually got sillier and more campier. And by the time this came out, it was like, okay, yeah, we're we're really kind of pushing the boundaries of, of you know, silly aspects and yeah. children's but cartoon. if you are no but if you are a fan of christmas specials i put this right there with watching with charlie brown christmas any of the rudolphs anything when it's christmas time if you have a day off you're relaxing there's nothing on tv sure pop these in because uh i, I will be watching this on christmas i always save the actual watching i know we com- did commentary for this but when it's christmas i do watch charlie brown christmas i watch the he-man she were christmas special and i usually put on rudolph and twas the night before christmas gotta watch some of those gotta get into them so yeah you, I, I just can't picture anybody really hating that cartoon it's meant to be fun it's fun, meant to be christmas they did all the elements all together yeah you just kind of kind of have to get over the whole monstroid fiasco that shows. <laughs> it's, it's a bit too much in the special you know but um overall yeah it's it's a, it's in the realm of Christmas specials, because so many, so many were done from various cartoons. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, yeah, you, it, you really, you know, I, I get when people say, like, you know, of course, James E. Talk himself says, you know, he's, it, it's, yes, because there's so many inconsistencies. It's, it's all, it's a story that's all over the place. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, it almost feel like it's hard to pick. It's too easy to pick on it almost as if like you know i could never in a million years come out publicly and start bashing this cartoon to people i just couldn't do it because there's a charm to it is it great no it's not you know it's not like the the quality of the dragon's gift and house of shakoti hell no not supposed to but still fun to watch for me the biggest thing was all the cameos that was always the big selling point for me as a kid to see snout spout and Moss Man and, and Lizard Man and you know Cyclone and, and so many characters are featured in this show. You were given a lot. Uh, I mean, from that to all the vehicles to all the different planets. I mean, you were given quite a bit. So I mean, there was a lot. You had all the big baddies. So yeah, I mean, no Shadow Weaver, but uh, you know, you basically got all of everybody else that you really. Yeah, need. M- the majority of the heavy hitters, especially toys like characters. I mean, like all, all the Shearer's pals from Perfuma and. Peaky Blue and Flood Arena. I mean, all those were available toys at the time. Yeah, the uh, laser bolt yeah. always geeked me out. When I seen the laser bolt, I just freaked. I freaked out. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, because that that was that was a prominent vehicle in 1985, I think. Because the, the the special came out in 1986, didn't it? I think this was 86 for the special. I think it was 86. Yeah. The He-Man she yeah, Christmas. so I don't want to quote it and then be wrong, but I think it was seen on the shelves at this point. Yeah, so no, so it was a great episode. But uh, Tyler, you'll have some closing remarks here, but just uh, wanted to let everybody know that next week we'll be off because, well, this it would be Christmas Eve and you know, families things going on. Obviously, Christmas the next day, so we'll be uh, we'll be off next week, and then the following week it'll be New Year's Eve and a New Year's Day, so. You know, so we'll have a two weeks off. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll return strong the weeks after that. But yeah, we figure everybody can take a little break, just uh, relax a little bit, and we'll be back as strong as ever when we come back from our little bit of vacation. But oops. yeah, we uh, we you know, oh, don't we always we want to keep people wanting the show, and hopefully this little two week break will build up a healthy appetite for our return when we would come back in twenty eighteen. Be uh, another well. It won't be the the first beginning of a new year for us, it, it, but um, beginning of a 2018 with you know hopefully more classic figures to come, a new Shira cartoon, and hopefully some more positive news and things on the way in 2018. So, um, but um, Peter Lane in the chat room, he said, "Breaks, bah, who needs them?" 
Well, yeah, and believe me, if, 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 if this had not fallen on a Sunday, we would still be doing this. We're, we are doing this right. because I'm be Christmas Eve. I'm going to be with my family Christmas Eve night. I'm, I'm sure, you know, Joe and Doug have got things they'll be doing. No one's yeah. going to be around to listen to us on Christmas Eve anyway. Even if all three of us had the evening to, to do this. Oh, wait a second, Tyler. First, I want to say Dave Clark. He said, hope everyone enjoys their Christmas and New Year. I, do, I say the same to you, too. But good Lord, just pop back up. That same spammer, find your love, just popped up. Just popped up back in the chat room. It's like, I thought we just got rid of the spam at the beginning. The spam returned. So much. I love how Doug was like playing the bouncers. Like, hey, you've been warned. And then grabs this like little guy. And I'm, I'm picturing it's like, like the, the mole guy from the Simpsons, you know, just this, this little, little, little guy just kind of pops up out of nowhere. And These little spammers, where the hell they come from? But I did want to say one thing. Uh, I wanted to say happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everything to everybody. But I have a question. This is this has nothing to do with Masters, but I was always curious about one thing. We got Happy New Year, Happy Easter, Happy Fourth of July. We got uh, Happy Thanksgiving, Valentine's happy, Day. happy Valentine's Day, Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Halloween, and then we got Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Like, you know, I thought in one of those rhymes that actually used to be in Twas the Night Before Christmas, at the end, Santa said, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. When did it become Merry Christmas? Has it always been Merry? Because why is it out of all the holidays, Christmas is Merry, everything else is happy? Just thought that was kind of weird. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't sound right. It just it doesn't roll off the tongue. Happy Christmas. Santa said it in Twas the Night Before Christmas. He well, said it. Well, the guy who wrote that book, you know, did, just threw it in there probably just to piss people off. He's like, you can't tell me not to put it in here. By God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say Happy Christmas. Yeah, I just thought that was curious. So that's Joe's little goofball fact that is absolutely meaningless. But, hey, figured I'd say it. So, we'll go ahead, yeah. Tyler. You brought so much to the show with that, that bit of Didn't trivia. I? Didn't I? I love my just worthless trivia. Of course, that's what trivia is, is worthless information. But oh, I gave you worthless, worthless. T-Man and She-Ra and Thundercats and Turtles and G.I. Joe and Silver Hawks and anything Arnold Stallone and Van Damme related and so on and so forth. Merry New Year! That's Happy New Year there. <laughs> but, that doesn't work yeah, either. But, yeah, uh, Mary, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I'm going to give away another copy of this and um, of the Leech Mini comic. Uh, the last week's winner is will be in the mail tomorrow. I I got delayed this week and actually went to the post office yesterday to mail it out. And um, my post office was, had not opened at that point. And I'm like, I, I don't know what was going on. The doors were closed. I go to another post office. There's a line almost out the door. I had stuff I had to do, so I, I will have it in the mail. Hopefully, tomorrow when I get done at work, I will uh, drop that off um, and okay. get that in well, the how mail. Can, how can they win this issue? Uh, well, if you don't want to win a free copy, you contact Carson at uh, I want a He Man comic at AOL dot day and purchase a copy. Um, he's sending me some more copies as well, so I'll be doing some more giveaways of this as well. But uh, to win tonight's copy. And I, I didn't realize this, that uh, last week's was on pretty quick because uh, apparently, which I don't know for sure, but I, I know that um, the He-Man Encyclopedia has got a lot of stuff listed in that. And that's probably how last week's may have been won. I think Dave, David Clark contacted me and gave me, he'd already won. But he just wanted to participate anyway and answered it pretty quick. And I'm like, God, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Like people don't have to think they go right to that encyclopedia and be able to find stuff like that. So maybe this week's will be just the same. I have no idea. But um, to win this week's copy of the unofficial Leech mini comic, I need to know the episode that or episodes that featured the Manticore, the uh, Trachodon, and um, oh god, I just had the third one there, um, the Ice Hacker. If you can name all three episodes that each one of those animals slash beasts appeared in, you will get a free copy of the Leech mini comic. What episode did the Manticore show up? What episode did the Trachodon show up? And which episode did the Ice Hacker show up? Well, let me just grab my encyclopedia here. And look, there's that. Whoa, there's that. There's that. Got it. No. <laughs> Could you imagine if that is what happened? 
Hey, I guess, hey, that's if that, that's what this stuff is for, is to give people information. That, that way they can tell their friends and family what episode this guy showed up in. What, you know, what weapon does Buzz Off come with? He comes with his stinger lance. Or you could say, where can you find out about Club Clawful? If you can find out where Club Clawful is and where this image comes from, you win a copy of that mini comic. Of course you can't because that's just something Joe just babbled. So I was just babbling. Here. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Do you, is it, is uh, Damn it. What? What happened? I, um, I like that. Oh, okay. Well, I, I can, but yeah, I mean, that, this could be too obscure. I, I don't know if fans would know well, that. Be too easy. I, I thought last week should be a little more difficult. And then I found out that the humanoid, insect man, and bear man are, are their official names are in that encyclopedia. Well, there you go. It's Clawful's Club. I have a picture here. And for those who are listening on the audio version, you can go to, fans of power and look it up on YouTube for episode 111 and see what I'm talking about. Quaffles Club. So if you want this to be part of it, Tyler, maybe that could be for somebody well, else. I've only up. got one more copy to give away and I got to wait for the next batch show. But however, if someone figures that out, well, I will make sure to mark them down. So when the next batch of comics come in, I will send them one as well. So if okay. they, want, they don't know one, but they know the other, I'll, I'll I'll keep that one up, and I'll just remember to send send. Uh, if someone happens to get that, let Joe know because I don't, even I don't know what that's from. So okay, yes, I even made sure. To... Yeah, because huh? I I even made sure to show part of the other page to give them a little a little teaser of the other. You know, it might give them an idea, and of course, just seeing the shape of the book might help. So yeah, so hopefully somebody will figure that out. So there you go. Well, that's something. Contact Joe, and then Joe will contact me because I even I don't know what that is. So. Okay. If you know what it is, let Joe know, and he'll let me know when, when the next batch of comics come in. I'll get you a free copy as well. So. And did you want them to post the answers on the Fans of Power uh, Facebook page too? Is that where would you'd want it or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, do that. And it's the first one that posts it. You have to be the first one to get it right. And, you know, it's it, – if I – because I, I don't check it immediately. And if I go and, and, and look at it, I have to see who's the first person that posted it. Even if it's three or four people may get it right. I got to go with the first guy that did it. So okay. Um, All right. But but, I, but with more copies coming in, I, I want I want people to want this comic. I, I, you know, I, I want to. By the way, <clears throat> I can't remember if I said this last week, but I, the the uh, story for the second book is finished. Uh, it's been given to Carson. Uh, Joe, I'm going to have to send you uh, the script so you can proofread it for me. Okay. Okay. Well. So that way I can avoid any kind of grammar mistakes. But um, the second one is going to be the the Clamp Champ Ninja mini comic. That'll um, be fun. Well, that's all all I can say about it. Now I won't give away the title. Won't give away. Uh, the cover has been kind of designed and everything. Carson's working on that as well. Looks awesome, and uh, I think it'll be a fun one. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, hopefully, you won't get pissed off at me for telling that. <laughs> we won't. I'm working on the Cosmic Key. When I had the, I, I end up. I feel like I had to scrap initially what I had done. I, I did, the more I kind of came into writer's block, I'm like, damn, I don't like what I'm doing here. So <laughs> I'm, was... I'm working on rewriting the blade when, as we speak. Um, All right. But uh, okay. people, the cosmic key stuff is still coming. I just finished the, the, the clam chant ninja story faster. So awesome. Um, but the okay. second one is on the way. All right, Tyler. Well, uh, well, again, I appreciate every one of you guys that were in the chat room and joined us, and of course, everybody else that's listening, whether this is on iTunes or just any other format. We always appreciate you and your feedback. And, well, again, you know, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. We're going to be off two weeks. We'll be back. But let me just tell everybody where you can always go. You can go to fansofpower.com, go to popculturenetwork.com, go to hemanworld.com on our Facebook, go to Masters of the Universe He Man and Shira Ultimate Fan Group. All great places, all great people. So until next time, have a powerful day. Oh, and uh, I, I guess too. Also, uh, I, I never think to this, but I, you know, I post the, all all the episodes are available on YouTube. They're on Podbean. Um, I've been posting the episode uh, links as well on Hema.org in the forums in the media uh, uh, forum area. Um, I was trying to think. Or is there any other place that you post the episodes, Joe? I mean, you can find and you can find them on our Facebook pages as well. So. Oh, yeah. If you listen to this for the first time, you can go to our Facebook pages. I'm always posting the links at least twice a week uh, on Pop Culture Network's Facebook page and Joe's Facebook page and stuff like that. Just trying to emphasize that you come across this 
we're, we're, we're posting this stuff in multiple avenues for people to find. Okay. Uh, you got to do your end quote. I got to guess this. I'm going to try to guess it. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. My, uh, it kind of took, took us out of rhythm here. Joe, Joe, do your, do your closing thing again, and then I'll throw out my, my quote. Okay. Well, you heard everything I said, but have a powerful day. What the hell's going on? I mean, what the hell's going on? That's it? That's it. What's going on? Oh my God, that's so obscure. I have no clue. What is that? It's back. It's what the hell's going on? I mean, what the hell is going on? And you said, what was that from? I didn't say what it was from. Well, tell me. I don't know what that is. I don't know. It's Kevin Bacon from Tremors. Oh God. Wow. Talk about something obscure. Jesus. I'm going to say somebody said, what? Girl, you know Tremors. Don't tell me that you don't know Tremors. <laughs> That was, oh, God. All right, there we go. We ended on something insane. I love it. So, see you guys. Well, everybody, Merry Christmas and a Happy New yep. Year and a, a Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you might celebrate, if, even if you celebrate nothing. I hope that your next couple weeks are, are just as happy and wonderful as, as it possibly could be. Happy times. So, happy times ahead. All right, see you guys. Later.